what do you think is going to become come from IPI and or inventory restrictions specifically in 2022? Yeah, I think if anything, Amazon's just going to continue cracking down on how they like limit retailers in their this mm -hmm. warehouse space they're taking up. Like I said earlier, like it's becoming increasingly scarce that warehouse space. I know plenty of retailers are feeling that crunch. Um, so Amazon's gonna have to do something if there's products sitting on a shelf for 120 days, they're not gonna let that fly. They're not gonna let that that seller bring in additional inventory. So so yeah, I, I think we've seen it even over the last year um, where they've been cracking down a little bit more on it, but I would, I would expect it to get even more and more um, hard headed about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about IPI. And before we even get, well, let's start off with two things. Let's start off with what IPI is, and let's start off with why it's so important, especially for right now, the start of 2022. So what is IPI? Why does it matter? Yep, that's a great question, Cam. So IPI is in Inventory Performance Index, um, and that's really a metric that Amazon ut utilizes to gauge performance and inventory sell-through for 3P sellers via FBA. Um, so there's a few factors that really go into play when determining the IPI, but really what we want to center in on today is excess inventory and the impact that that can have on your IPI score. So, um, so why, why is this like, why is it so relevant for, for tw early 2022 specifically? You said you had an interaction with a client that prompted this to come up. What, what did that look like? Yeah, also a great question. So obviously as we're heading into the new year for across our client set and all sellers on Amazon, we're going to be having new products that are coming into play, wanting to add that to your, to your, offering. We're also going to be doubling down on our top sellers and making sure that we're replenishing inventory there. So as it's becoming increasingly difficult to hold that warehouse space, and it's becoming scarce on Amazon's end. Um, 3P sellers are going to be running into some roadblocks potentially, and they're going to want to be aware of these things as they are looking to replenish that inventory. Um, so actually on the, the client side, and uh, had a great example this week that we were running into where one of our top sellers went out of stock um, and our client went to replenish the inventory and actually received pushback from Amazon saying that they couldn't because they were they had excess inventory on another product. So this other product, not a top seller, had been sitting in the warehouse for a while and is actually inhibiting our ability to add it back in the top seller. So next question is, what do we do to combat that? Right. So still working through it, um, but there are kind of four major things that we can look to, to help kind of sell through that inventory or free up that warehouse space. Um, the first two that I'm gonna discuss would be our recommended methods. And then the last two are kind of like last ditch efforts that we'd want to get into, um, but really try and avoid if we can. Yeah. Um, so yeah, first two, um, first one being discounts or coupons on that product that's not selling through. Obviously, if we can lower the price, higher likelihood that our conversion rate will increase and help move that inventory. Yeah. That's not always going to work perfectly, obviously. Um, so another thing we can do, and this can kind of be in addition to the discounts or separate altogether, but we can increase our advertising um, levels and really push spend to that product. Maybe it's not super efficient because it, obviously it's not selling through as is, but if we're really trying to get that off the shelves, then we're probably willing to spend a little bit more, take a hit on efficiency to try and open up that that shelf space. Right. So, so those, are, those are two... Not, they're, they're not super quick and super guaranteed methods necessarily, right? But they're perhaps more long form strategies to clear out this inventory that take a little bit more effort to put in. Right? Exactly, yeah. Super. It's not gonna be just a flip of the switch where your inventory is right. cleared out using those methods. It will be, those two will be the most efficient way to do it in that you won't be losing as much money. The, the other two options that I'm about to go into will, you will take a loss, but it will could be the quicker of the two options. Okay, so what are those last two then? 
So the last two are dumping, which is basically you have Amazon throw away your inventory for the most part. I'm not sure exactly what they do with the inventory. I don't know that they trash it, but they remove the inventory from the shelves, opening things back up for additional products, top sellers, new items, whatever it might be. What might be. Um, the last one is liquidation, which I still wouldn't recommend this over the first two options, but liquidation, you can still get a small chunk of your money back. Like I'm talking maybe five, 10% of what you normally sell the product for, but Amazon will sell this at a much discounted rate to liquidators um, in order to free up that inventory space. So I'm curious to get, we, we have the four methods. We have discounts and coupons, increased advertising, dumping and liquidations. Let's say that you have a, a client that wants to move inventory very quickly, right? Like time is of the essence to get inventory in free up that space, work with the IPI, what would you recommend if time is the most important factor? I think liquidation, if time is very much of the essence, I would still recommend though, like exhausting your other options first. Yeah. It might take a little bit longer, um, but yeah, you and will be taking dealing, a major loss. We're, and we're dealing, we're dealing with, you know, it's hard to be general because every category and product is going to be different, but you're dealing with, losses pretty mm -hmm. perhaps pretty significant losses at the dumping and, and liquidation standpoint right exactly. so what is your time worth um what is your inventory worth Th there's probably some math that needs to be done to figure out which of these methods would be best if you're in a time crunch but yeah. I, I think that's a good point that honestly most of the time getting the most value or money back out of your sitting inventory is probably going to be the better bet yeah you, you got to determine really what's the most cost effective method for you like are you taking a bigger loss by not being able to advertise on those top sellers or are you would you be taking a huge loss by just dumping the inventory all together like it's going to depend on your cost of goods sold it's going to depend on a lot of different factors for the client example that i brought up earlier they only have a few products so like less than five so if one of them is the best seller and the other one is out at like it has excess inventory maybe we just need to shift our focus and we haven't done enough to support the one with excess inventory in the past give it a shot see if we can sell through it if not got it. kind got of it. look into one of these other options got it okay i want to i want to talk about broad uh ipi in or inventory conversation unscripted <laughs> okay so we're talking about let's talk about broad inventory ipi so I'm curious, just from your perspective, your observations, do you see IPI changing? Like, what, what do you think is going to become come from IPI and or inventory restrictions specifically in 2022? It's a brand new year. Uh, we saw some restrictions kind of come semi-recently in the grand scheme of things from Amazon having to do with inventory and IPI. So where do you see things moving right now? Yeah, I think if anything, Amazon's just going to continue cracking down on how they like limit retailers in their this mm -hmm. warehouse space they're taking up. Like I said earlier, like it's becoming increasingly scarce that warehouse space. I know plenty of retailers are feeling that crunch. Um, so Amazon's going to have to do something if there's products sitting on a shelf for 120 days. They're not going to let that fly. They're not going to let that that mm -hmm. seller bring in additional inventory. So, so yeah, I, I think we've seen it even over the last year um, where they've been cracking down a little bit more on it, but I would, I would expect it to get even more and more, I don't know, hard headed about it. Yeah. 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 It's restrictive. I, and that is why yeah. I see this conversation is so important. But as you're prepping and really going into your 2022 planning, make sure you have a, a good plan in place for top sellers and really more items that aren't selling as well, figuring out ways to get ahead of the game and ensuring that they're not sitting on the shelves on Amazon for too long and then running into an instance like the client example that I gave you where they can no longer add and replenish their top selling items. So staying ahead of that curve um, will be critical as you head into 2022. Amazing. Nick, thank you so much for your inputs and your advertising knowledge. Looking forward to more conversations like this at AdMax and more conversations with you, Nick. Thank you again. Awesome. Thank you, Kim.